Well, greetings all to in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Thursday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. This morning we're in Psalm 88 on our on our journey through the Psalms and I'll be reading from the verse uh, from verses 1, 2 and 3. Uh, 1 and 2, pardon me, from the New Living Translation. <clears throat> but let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we come on this dreary, uh, wet day, and we come with joy and thanksgiving into your presence, that we have this opportunity to meet with you, to commune with you, and to hear your still small voice speaking to us, a word of encouragement and hope. Lord, we don't let the circumstances around us steal our joy, the joy that comes from you. And so, Lord, we come and we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. So, Psalm 88, verses 1 and 2. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out to you by day. I come to you at night. Now hear my prayer, listen to my cry. This psalm of the descendants of Korah is a, a psalm of lament, but also a psalm of, of joy, of acknowledging that God is the God who hears us when we cry out to him. He's the God who meets us where we are in the midst of life and helps us, comforts us, strengthens us for our journey. And so the psalmist says, O Lord, God of my salvation. So right from the outset, he is acknowledging the, the truth that God is the God of our salvation. There is no other God except for Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the one who saves. There is no other God in heaven or on earth or under the earth that saves. There is no other God except for Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the only one who is able to save us. Jesus says in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acknowledging that he is the only way through which we can be saved. There is no amount of works that we can do, no, no efforts that we can put in that can improve upon what Jesus has already accomplished on the cross at Calvary for our sake. That through his sacrifice on the cross, through his shed blood on the cross, we have the opportunity to receive the free gift of salvation that comes from him alone. And so the psalmist is beginning this psalm with the acknowledgement that God is the God of our salvation. And he says, I cry out to you by day. In other words, he is the one to whom we cry. We offer the meditations of our hearts. We lament, yes, but we also praise and worship and adore. One of the things that I love about the Psalms is that they, they reflect the, the true human condition. That, that just because we are in Christ doesn't mean that our lives are perfect. It doesn't mean that our lives are free from, from trials and tribulations and challenges and difficulties and suffering and loss. Jesus never promised us a perfect life. He never promised us a life free from difficulty. Indeed, he says in John's Gospel that you will experience trials and tribulations and difficulties in this world. But he says, take heart, be encouraged. 
He has overcome the world. So we may suffer for a season. We may suffer for a night. But joy comes in the morning. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And so joy comes in the morning because of his presence in our lives. And friends, I experienced that just this day. I, for whatever reason, last night was not having a good night. I was, you, you could say I was in a funk or in a bad mood or just nothing was working out and, and I was just out of, out of sorts. And I wasn't particularly a good company for Susan, that's for sure. It was just one of those nights. We all have them. And I went to bed, not particularly in a good mood, but as we always do, we always um, read a devotional and, and spend a few moments in God's word. And I prayed. So I went to bed, not in a particularly good mood, but I woke up this morning with the joy of the Lord in my heart and the joy of the Lord in my spirit and in my countenance. So I didn't carry that bad mood, that out of sorts spirit from last night into today. Today is a new day and we rejoice in it. And God did that for me. He did that for me because as I, as we got ready for bed, we spent time in his word. And as we got ready for bed, we prayed. And God heard the cries of our hearts. He says, I come to you at night. I, I cry out to you by day. Friends, I am not perfect. I am not a model for spiritual righteousness and, and direction. Not by a long shot. But I can testify to the truth of God's word that when we, when we cry out to the Lord by day, when we seek his wisdom and his courage and his strength and his word, by day, when we take moments to pray to Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by day, and we come to Him at night, we, no matter what our day has, has um, taken on, no matter the shape of our day or, or our mood or our countenance or what have you, during the day, when we end our day with God, in his word, in prayer. Our countenance changes. And God does a mighty work in our hearts and our spirits while we sleep. And so the psalmist was right when he says, mourning and weeping at night is turned into joy and dancing in the morning. And so the psalmist says, now hear my prayer. Listen to my cry. Friends, we serve and worship a God who hears our prayers. He listens to our cries. And I love the way he, the psalmist uses both those words, hear and listen in this verse. Because there is a difference. We, and, and you may have experienced this as you've been having a conversation with somebody. There are lots of people who hear us, but they don't necessarily listen to us. Hearing just acknowledges that we have the ability to hear what other people are saying. But listening, actually listening to what people are saying, that is different. That listening means you're putting out of your mind and out of, out of your heart 
anything, any distraction but what that person is saying. And listening to them, to the words they're speaking and sharing with you. There are lots of people who hear, but there are fewer people who actually listen. And it's a, it's, it's a gift. It's a, well, I shouldn't even say it's a gift. It's something that we have to nurture within ourselves. There was a time in my life where I was, a, I was very good at hearing, but not very good at listening. I'd be hearing what somebody would be saying, and I would already in my mind be formulating a response, formulating a, something to say. But when you listen, you actually put aside all of that and you just listen for what the person is saying. And then when they have finished speaking, then you formulate a response. And that response may be silence. There are lots of times when, I'm, when I am listening to somebody and when they have finished saying what they had to say, I've prayed a quick little prayer, Lord, give me the wisdom to know what to say. Give me the words to speak. Quick little prayer. It takes no time at all, and I don't say it out loud, I say it in my heart, but God hears me, and God answers my prayer. And so, friends, as we journey through this day, I encourage you to spend time with the Lord. I encourage you to cry out to the Lord and share with him the things that are, the burdens, the, the, the things that are on your heart today. I encourage you to, as you prepare to get ready for bed, as you are getting ready to turn off the light and go to sleep, spend a couple of moments in God's word. Just take out your Bible and read these two verses again. And then just say a little prayer to God. God, as I'm about to go to sleep, would your peace pour over me? And would you give me wisdom as I sleep so that I may wake in the morning with your joy in my heart? Trust in the Lord, friends, because he hears every single prayer that is offered up. And he listens to the meditations of our hearts, each one of us. And he cares so deeply for each one of us that he wants to minister to us and help us on our journey. And he will do it. His word tells us that he will never abandon or forsake us. And so I encourage you, friends. Let's take a moment of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that you are the God of our salvation and that you hear us when we cry out to you by day and by night. We thank you, O oh God, that you hear us when we cry and you listen to us as we speak to you. You're the one who listens to the meditations of our hearts. Jesus, we thank you that you died in order for us to have this kind of intimate, loving relationship with your Heavenly Father. And so, God, I just pray that as we journey through this day, whatever is before us, that your joy may fill us and that we may know your presence. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures from Psalm 89. Look forward to seeing you. Friends, have a great day and go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.